The American dream. There's a reason they call it a dream. <laughs> Who's there? Cock-a-doodle-doo, pal. No, 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 no! I don't have any more money! My job sucks right now! Please! I'll have more money next month! You can't take my house! Is that your signature? Oh, okay, well, just help me work something out, okay? I mean, you said I'm a good credit guy, right? I mean, hey, wait! My gun is in there! No! Don't take my dream! <laughs> Oh, how did this happen? <laughs> Hardman? I is that you? It's been a long time since the fourth grade. Is that a time machine? There's no need to concern yourself with my stunning accomplishments. Best get in. There's not much time. I gotta go down to the bank and get my life back. They took everything! Oh, bank ain't gonna help you now. Towel in the trunk. Extra set of balls, put them on, you're gonna need them. You're gonna get my dream back? No, pal, you are. I'm here to show you how. Submitted for your approval. One, First National Bank. What is a bank, you ask? A curious place where both space, time, and irony exist. And yet, don't. Are you going to be doing that the whole time? Pay attention, pile. Exhibit A, those who have come to deposit and safely store their earned monies. Exhibit B, those who need to borrow said money for purposes unknown. Hey, that's me! Ergo, Exhibit C, the bank only has so much money in the vault to lend out to people such as you. Hey, hey, that's the guy. He took my house. Really screwing my vibe here, pal. Space-time continuum. He can't hear you. Just let me narrate. Now, where was I? <clears throat> so you see, by the time he got to you, pal, his bank was out of money. But he gave me lots of money and, and charged me a lot of interest. Yes, that's the only way banks make money, by making debt loans. Debt equals money, pal. Remember that. Debt equals money. The more loans they make, the more money they make. But if they don't have any money, then where did my money come from? You're gonna want to take a step back. Whoa! No way! Yes way. And that's nothing. Hey, buddy! Need some money? They didn't do that! Oh, they did exactly that, pile. Remember, banks make money by making loans, by selling debt, even to bad credit risks. Yo, have some money, dude. Just sign here. Oh, my gosh. Mmm, they called it free money. Yeah, that's exactly what my loan guy told me. Free money. But it ain't free. The worst power was offering money to people who don't even need it. People power like you. You're right. I didn't need him. I was happy here. I didn't need it. Why is he sad? He's making all that money. Shh. He's thinking. Now wait for it. Now wait for it. Bingo. See, the bank is loaned to everyone in town. But to make more money, they have to loan even more. More? How much money do they need? More. Ah, what's that? Behold, a black horse riding. Credit card. I mean, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. What now? Now, with power with all this money, we might as well party. Oh, this 
This is awesome. I needed to get my head clear. When I get back, I'm going to straighten all this out. I just hope Dream is doing okay. <laughs> I'm going to get you, my pretty. Yep, he is. I'm sure he is. <clears throat> you put it on his tab. Little something for yourself. <clears throat> Wait. You know, wait a second, Hartman. I, I just thought of something. If I got this money from the bank, and the bank got it from the Federal Reserve dump trucks... Go on. Then where does the Federal Reserve get their money? Real nice time, ladies. Real nice. Now excuse me while I borrow you. Say, Hartman, why am I wearing a burglar bikini top? Because no one is allowed inside the Fed. Not you, not me, no American citizen, no duly elected member of our Congress, not the Supreme Court. Not the Supreme Court? Not the Supreme Court. Not the Justice Department, not the CIA, DIA, FBI, ATF, ATE, NBC, not even G-O-D. Well, how come the government isn't allowed inside its own building? Government? Ah, the Fed is a private bank owned by private stockholders. Do not let the name Federal fool you. This place is about as Federal as Federal Express. A, a, a private bank? But, but, private? Shh. Best to keep your voice down, pal. This is Ethan, Federal Reserve. Hey, Ethan, Bill here, First National. Hi there, Bill. How are you? Good, good. We're running a little low on money. No problem. How much you need? Oh, how does 20 million sound? What? Excellent. We'll ship it over first thing tomorrow. Wait, wait, he can just call up the Fed and ask for more money and they give him whatever they want? No, pal. The Fed don't give the banks money. The Fed loans the banks money. The banks have to pay it back with interest. Now, come on. Time to go. Wait, 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 wait. I, I still don't understand. Where does the Fed get their money? I mean, if they're a private bank. You said they're a private bank, right? Okay, so who puts money into the Fed Bank? This is Mel, United States Mint. Hi, ML. First National needs another 20 millis. We're already running the prices full steam here, Ethan. Gotta keep making loans. Gotta keep the money flowing. All right, you're the Fed. Whatever you guys say, 20 million more by morning. <laughs> But I don't get it. What's so wrong about the Fed printing money? Because it's unconstitutional, pal. Our treasury is supposed to create our money, but now the Fed controls the printing of America's money. Nobody gets a friggin' dollar that the Fed didn't print. So, they print the money, then they loan it to the government, then they charge the government interest, then the government taxes you to pay for it. Wake up, pal! God, I don't see what the big deal is. You know you're right, pal. Wait a minute. Wait, I am? Yeah. I forget how effective they are at keeping you ignorant. Oh, that's okay. Hey, I'm not ignorant. Do you even know what money is, pal? In the long, long ago, people bought it. They traded things they had for things they wanted. I'll trade you my raspberries for that there pot pie. Uh, I don't want your berries. Come on. Oh, wow, those sweet berries. They're not sweet. They're old, and I don't like berries. Give me that pot pie! No! As you can see, this bothering situation created some problems. Then one day, a goldsmith walked up and said, Now, everybody thinks gold is valuable, so why doesn't everybody trade gold for things they need? A price was set for gold, and now it was very easy to conduct commerce because people could trade gold for all the things they needed. <laughs> Hartman! Wow! Look at all my gold! Hey! Hey, stop them! That's my gold! Damn, thieves! Say there, pile. I've got a vault and some guards. I can keep your gold safe for you. For a small fee. Yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. You see, pile, this is how the first bank made money. There you go, pile. I owe you 100 gold coins. Okay, great! Come back any time and redeem your gold when you want it. It'll be right here. In my vault. Now you're holding the very first paper money pile. Wow, this is great. It all makes sense. Oh, that's right. It was good. And everybody started using IOUs because everybody knew the IOU was as good as gold. <laughs>
Wow, this candy is really a good price. One IOU. <laughs> I'm getting some more for later. Hey, wait a minute. It was just one IOU. Ten IOUs for chocolate? You can't just raise prices like that. Oh, the candy man can. Oh, the candy man can. Wait, that is just freaking wrong. It's called inflation, pal. It makes your IOUs worth less and less until they are worth nothing. Less bang for the buck, dollar ain't what it used to be. B but I worked hard and I baked all those pot pies. Now I have to work harder to make less? That's not fair. Oh, if you think that's not fair, you're gonna love the next part. What's he doing? How do banks make money, pal? Uh, by making more loans? Oh, that's right. He's good. See, he prints more IOUs without any more gold, loans him out for interest, makes a pretty penny, and nobody is the wiser. Unless everybody wanted their gold back at the same time. No, 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 no. Th that's my gold. Not anymore. What are you talking about? I'd like to redeem my IOUs, please. Thank you very much. Hey! That's all right. I love the bank run, bringing people together. See, they all found out he was stealing, made a run on the bank, and demanded their gold. But as you can see, they ain't no gold to get. Hurt, man! Don't worry, pal. Back in these times, vengeance is gonna be yours. Three things in this world you don't do. Never mess with another man's woman. Never mess with another man's ego. And most importantly, you never mess with another man's money. Else, a man will mess with you. My God! You hung him? Yes, Pa. Oh, we hung him. We hung him high. And do you know why? Well, because he was a thief? Because, Pile, an evil invention was born. Man discovered how to turn worthless paper into gold. Thus was invented the ultimate machine to steal real money and enslave all the nations on Earth. It's alive! Oh, now, come on. You're just being dramatic. I, I, I mean, I lost my house, but... What is that? Explain. A nuclear power plant? Mm-hmm. Produces lots of electricity and little pollution. An invention for the good of humanity. Okay, but what's this have to do with... Three... Two... Holy atomic energy! A discovery more powerful than anything man had yet conceived. It can be used for good or evil. Now, unlike Einstein, the goldsmith's discovery has been kept a closely guarded secret. It was never intended for you to see. This discovery is called fractional reserve banking. In the wrong hands, it's more powerful than the nuclear bomb in its ability to completely and utterly destroy a nation who is subjected to its perversion. No, 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 no. It is time we stop this evil secret and the men behind it. You're being ridiculous. Before America is destroyed forever. Believe it, Pat. No, no, no. My dog back. Damn it. That's it. I give up. Let them live in chains. No, Hardman. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Thomas Jefferson? Mr. President, how do I get him to understand? As we did, son, remain vigilant. Too many have hidden the truth and the light of our liberty dims with every passing day. Quickly, take my horse. Show him. Wait. Show me what. Where are we going? <laughs> Stallion of Liberty! Right on the Holy Wind! Oh, where are we? Battle of Waterloo! Hold on, we gotta get through! A money machine! There it is! Hey, is that the same people? Rich banker men from Germany flying under the banner of the Red Sheep. They finance both sides of the war. We must hurry! That's him, the Red Shield Courier! Shoot him! No! I'm not shooting anyone. Damn it, Pop! What? He beat everyone back with the news of the war and told England that Napoleon won. The Red Shield backers in London pretended that England was doomed and started selling their English stocks. 
the English went into a selling frenzy to get rid of worthless English money. But the English won, right? Of course they won. But it was a trick by Red Shield. They waited until the stocks plummeted to pennies and then bought England back for nearly nothing. What? They did that? How? When the English leaders found out, they had no choice but to give themselves over to the Red Shield. Their money was gone and they were slaves to the Red Shield war debt. Since that time, the English have been paying their national taxes directly to the Red Shield private bankers. The people have no idea. But the bankers bragged about what they did to us, laughing at us all the way to the bank. Why, it's the best business I've ever done. If I can control a nation's wealth, I care not who makes its laws. Oh, is this what Jefferson wanted to show me? No, pal. Look. They're in America, too? The Red Shield Banks are here, pal. Seeking a way to conquer our American dream. The dream you have, pal. The dream of free men. They tried to take over our country many times and failed because Jefferson and the Patriots vowed to stop the evil tyrants at all costs. By authority of eternal God, he would not let the bankers win again. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our choice between economy and liberty or profusion and servitude. Wow. I place economy among the first and most important of Republican virtues, and public debt is the greatest of the dangers to be feared. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes. We must have a central bank to secure this country's finances. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless on the very continent their fathers conquered. Jefferson, you're mad. This country will have a central bank. Who's that? America's first Secretary of Treasury. Alexander Hamilton? Not for long. Aaron Burr, Thomas Jefferson's vice president. They didn't take too kindly to our first sick treasury. Sweet shot, Burr. The first attempt at a central bank only lasted 20 years and we shut it down. But the bankers tried again against old hickory president Andrew Jackson. You are a den of vipers and thieves. I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. After surviving an assassination attempt, Jackson finally defeated the bank in 1836. When asked what was the greatest accomplishment in his life, Old Hickory replied, I killed the bank. And those were his last words. I killed the bank. And with real money backed with real gold, our country experienced the greatest boom in any nation's history. Oh, it was beautiful, pal. But the bankers, greedy for more power and wealth, were concocting their most ambitious plan yet to once and for all take control of the finances of the United States. In 1910, a secret meeting was held at the J.P. Morgan estate on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. This meeting was so secretive, so concealed from government and public knowledge, that the ten attendees used code names. I am clearly the richest man, so I should be the one to run the super-secret central bank. I own all the oil in America. I am clearly richer than you will ever be, hula girl. I should run the super-secret central bank. You're nothing compared to me, lube job. I shall run the secret bank. Silence! Supreme Master Leader, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I'm not. Neither are you, dumbass. Oh yeah, right, right. He's so smart. None of you shall run the bank. We have failed in the past because of openness. This time, the key to success is secrecy. The people must believe that they run the bank. Yes, brilliant! A sneak attack. What's the plan? We first create panic. Then we show them the solution. With our man in office and well-planned timing, we will have our central bank. And so the people think it is theirs. We shall christen it federal. 
the Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> They struck on December 23rd, 1913. When most of our Congress were at home eating fruitcake, these bastards, I mean bankers, presented their treasonous act to their newly elected accomplice, Woodrow Wilson, who had fortuitously already agreed to sign it before he was even elected. Wait, the IRS? I thought we always had the IRS. No, pile. They did this to us, too. The Fed now has the exclusive power to print America's money. They loan this money to our banks and our government at interest, putting immediate debt on our own money, printing more and more, so each dollar they print becomes worth less than the one before. Merry Christmas. <laughs> What in the hell is that? That pie is how our government now must pay back these debts to the Fed. Your taxes do not go to your government. They don't? Mm. It's the greatest theft in human history. But, oh, okay, I mean, I sort of get what you're saying, but it's all so confusing. And really, Hartman, I don't see how it affects me at all. If I had more money, none of this would have happened. Hartman? Nineteen fifty-five. Wow, what are we doing here? Oh, a little bit of shopping. Here, hold this. Down on the gas, twenty-three cents. Postage stamp, three cents. Elsa gold, thirty-five dollars. Hot baby. Prices. Let's be getting back. Hey Hartman, I need my car, man. Oh, was that my gold chain? Yeah, he'll be fine. Now, pile. Would you agree that you have the same exact things you had in 1955? Yeah, one stamp, one gallon of gas, one ounce of gold, and one home. Wow, we just made a lot of money. Run, 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 run. Hey! Gotta pay your taxes. Bet it's nice to have made all that money. Wait, that isn't fair. Now I actually have less money. I, I can't even go buy the things I just sold. The IRS and the Fed's inflation work together, pile. They aren't just taxing gain, they are taxing their inflation. You are no richer than you were in 1955. Now, does that sound fair or American to you? Yeah, but I mean, who doesn't hate taxes? I hate the IRS anyway. Pile, the higher they make the inflation, the more your money they take. It's thievery. You're not paying taxes on any more. You are paying taxes on the same, and now... You have less. They take our property away right in front of our eyes, just like Thomas Jefferson said they would. What's that? Oh, they found us. Quick, my sword. What sword? We don't need your banking machine. I'll condemn you to die, damn it. Die! Pile! Don't Anki bogey on my night. I'll take him at his knees. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. What's happening? Where am I? I believe perhaps you understand now, Bile, but you are afraid. JFK, Hartman, what does this have to do with my house and my dog? Oh, okay, that's enough. I, I want to go home now. This is the last president to stand up to the Fed. You must see. On June 4, 1963, President Kennedy signed Executive Order 11110. This executive order empowered the U.S. Treasury to issue real money without the Fed. It would have worked. Kennedy's plan to dismantle the Federal Reserve machine had begun. But six months later, John F. Kennedy went to Dallas and never returned. No way. No way they could do that. The new president, Lyndon Johnson, threw out Kennedy's order. And since JFK, no president has dared confront the secret powers behind the Federal Reserve. They consolidate bigger and bigger banks, print more and more money accountable to no one, decimating our nation's wealth for the benefit of a few. Why? 
Why do this? If they hurt us, it hurts the global bankers too. No, Pile. They are protected. They are too big to fail. But I'm not. Those sons of bitches! Mm, sons of bitches all. The day was cold. The wind sharp and strong. But we were determined. The bankers and their parasites had us vastly outnumbered. But their hubris made them weak. Not like us. Not like this band of immortals we have assembled. We have come to take back our... Hardman? Is that... My dog. Oh, sh Then the inevitable. The Money Kings could ignore us no longer. They sent an emissary, a cog in their machine of greed, to bring about our submission. Hank Paulson. Hardman, this is blasphemy. We own the corners of the Earth. It is futile to challenge us. Oh, I've seen that look before. That of a predator taking in the scent of its prey. Bold, fearless, the look of a free man. You have come far, Hartman. Farther than most. Be smart now. Join us. We will bring you money, power, everything you want. You can be one of us, if you will kneel. This is! This is America! <laughs> <laughs> 